death to the US imperialists, they chanted, as students and soldiers marched into Kim Il-sung Square. We will do away with the B-2 bomber and nuclear submarine, which the enemies think are great, said this North Korean army officer. The mass rally was called to send a message of North Korea's anger. US Army out, reads this pre-prepared banner. And here's another staged image. Kim Jong-un signing authorization to train his missiles at US military bases. Strategically placed behind him, a map titled US Strike Plan. On it, missile trajectories appear to reach Los Angeles, Austin and New York. All this has prompted Russia to ask both sides to cool off. The situation may slip out of control and fall into a vicious circle. We deem it necessary that instead of flexing military muscles and using the situation as a pretext for solving geopolitical tasks by military means, the focus should be on what the Security Council calls for, namely the creation of conditions for the resumption of six-party talks. The US insists that its use of B-2 stealth bombers during a joint exercise with South Korea was not intended to provoke this kind of reaction. The North Koreans have to understand that um, uh, what they're doing is, is very dangerous. This newsreader tells North Koreans their missiles are on standby to strike the US mainland. There's no evidence they can do this. But in December, they did launch their first satellite into orbit. You don't want to overreact to the increase in rhetoric coming out of Pyongyang, but at the same time, you don't want to be caught on the back foot either. So I think uh, Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel has been sort of going tit for tat with Pyongyang. And as they ratchet up the pressure, we're responding, I think, in kind. At times, the rhetoric and propaganda seems comical. The US might not want to take North Korea seriously, but as a nuclear power, what choice do they have? Jason Farrell, Sky News.